you are back for more. Well done you. I'm still making use of some earlier footage, so you're yet to benefit from charming pieces of the camera. But this video will mainly cover the initial oily bits, and also some impossibly dusty foam cutting. First off, we needed to make sure our main diesel engine was in good health, otherwise we'd need to consider a whole new power system. Although having had practically no running hours, engines don't enjoy being sat idle for years, so we enlisted a professional to give it a once over. Uh, it was full service, so we'll be stripping the rocker cover off and doing all your tappets and valves, just making sure they're all with an adjustment as they should be. Cool. Oil changes, oil filter change, fuel change, fuel filter changing, sorry. Um, and other than that, I'm just checking through all your wiring, fuel lines, hose connections, everything, just to make sure everything's. It is as simple as undoing this screw on this fuel filler. Yep. And then you prime the priming pump here. And you just pump this continually, and then you'll start to see or feel or hear air bubbles coming from this screw. Air bubbles coming from the screw. And eventually, what are we waiting for? Uh, the fuel will start sweating out of here. Ah, uh, okay. We were pretty chuffed that we'd ended up with one of the larger Book lifeboat engines, which was a win for a couple of reasons. Chiefly that they're famously reliable, but also running a 48 horsepower engine at the lower end of its power curve should mean better fuel economy compared with wringing the neck of a smaller underpowered motor. Good news. Aside from the cosmetic dings and surface corrosion from a few years of storage, Allen's DV48 was awarded a clean bit of health. Small puffs of white smoke quickly dispersed as the engine warmed up. The electrics, aside from a dead alternator, did all their jobs too, and so I planned to give the engine new fuel filters and hoses, a good wire brushing, and then fresh paint a few months later to stave off corrosion. The boat is partially insulated and that foam also performs the task of making it fundamentally buoyant. That means, although you may be slightly irritated, if someone were to chop the boat clean in half whilst at sea, both halves would stay afloat. We needed storage though and calculated we could lose roughly a cubic metre or so of foam without much worry. Then the voids could be converted into locker space. The job was unpopular, fiddly, repetitious and with clouds of dry foam dust but in the end we had cavities which could be boxed in later and hatches fitted to. We kept the larger blocks as we'd need them later on and the special grade closed cell foam is scandalously expensive. That's it for now. Next time, Alan gets wet.